Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, or is it still good morning? This is Ray Tsuchiyama, your host for All About Leadership in Hawaii. And one of the areas for leadership is in government and politics, leading the state and at a national level. What to do in this climate, 2018, going forward, with a state in a turbulent world economy and politics? And we have our guest today, Ed Case, who's no stranger to politics, but unexpectedly, he's back in politics after a time in the private sector. And we're gonna talk about various topics, about what he's found out about Hawaii, priorities, people, and their thinking about themselves, about their children, parents, and going forward. Welcome to the show. Aloha, good to be back and uh, good to be with you. And congratulations on your recent primary Democratic Party win. I really appreciate that. It was a very good, solid win, but it is a primary win. So, you know, that's right. although some people have me already elected, uh, that's not the way I'm thinking at all. We have a general election coming up and we're working hard to earn the, the trust of uh, voters all over again in that election. Now, looking at November, how many elections have you done? Oh my Coming gosh! This, uh, uh, I think things. I think a couple of uh, I think I think I probably counted something like sixteen or seventeen election nights at the end of the day. Um, I won more of them than I lost, but of course I won some really good ones and I lost some uh, uh, really big ones. But uh, those are all in the past, so I can't do anything about those. Right. What I can do something about is the general election in, in actually uh, eight weeks from today. And one of the things you did, which I th felt was overlooked by the Hawaii media, was your walk a walk across CD1, which is Congressional District 1, uh, to all, uh, all you viewers out there, that encompasses much of the island of Oahu, except for the northern strip there, uh, which is connected to CD2. And where did you start and where did you end? Well, just by way of background, one of the things that I've always believed in, in my political career is complete and total immersion in your district, uh, to know your district cold, to know the people in your district uh, cold, to understand uh, the, the geography, the society, the, the, the economics, um, the, the, the rhythms uh, of your district. Um, you know, we've got 435 representative districts throughout the country. Each one of them has over 700,000 people in them. Um, and um, so you need to understand. And so from that perspective, I've always done talk stories and town meetings. I've all, always personally canvassed, which I did this campaign as well. Um, and I just came up with the idea that on this campaign, I just wanted to walk right through the first. Um, and I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, number one, absorb the first. Um, when you're in Washington, D.C., you're 5,000 miles away from Hawaii. And you have to know your district. You, you, you're sitting there on the floor of the U.S. House trying to make a call on a particular bill, and you're asking yourself, how does this bill impact not just my district, but parts of my district? So you gotta know your district. You don't have time to call up and figure it out. So you gotta absorb that, and it gives people a chance to check you out along the way. So And, I, and not all of CD1 is the same. I mean, Kaha well, is different than Kalihi and, 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 and Kapolei. The, <laughs> there, of course, is one of the larger, and if not the largest uh, um, observation I have, which is no surprise if you think right. about it from a intellectual academic perspective, but go out and walk it and right. really feel it. Because one thing that happens with when you walk um, is everything just slows down. Right. Um, you're not driving through it. You're not like whipping by where you see one thing for you know one second. You see that for two, three minutes while you're passing. And by. you also posted you stop, your photos on you Facebook. Also, <laughs> I did. I posted the entire thing, and you know that's one thing that I would encourage you viewers to do is just go on our Facebook. Um, and I did Instagram right along the way. Uh, <laughs> Took the pictures, went to Instagram, straight to Facebook, uh, Case for Congress, or uh, or my my Facebook page, Ed Case. You'll see all of the pictures. Right. I think I posted about uh, ten or twelve a day, just to kind of show people a diary of the story. Right. Um, anyway, CD One is basically urban Honolulu. It starts at Makapuu Point, right. um, and then it comes down uh, the the uh, leeward side of the Ko'olau all right. the way through East Honolulu, all the way through Central Honolulu, all the way through downtown leeward <clears throat> down into Waipahu, and then it kind of covers up all of Mililani down, right. from, and then from Waipahu down all the way through the entire Eva Plain right. out to Ko'olina, so right. Kahi Point really right. um, is the end of that district. Right. Um, oh, yeah, right. So uh, you really power, have power uh, <laughs> urban and suburban right. Honolulu um, um, 
uh, Kailua Kaneohe are not in the district, right. the North Shore is not, uh, Wahiawa on up, and the Waianae Coast are in the second congressional, which I represented uh, 2000. That's right, you flipped. Uh, I, I'm, uh, yeah. I, I would, CD, I would uh, actually two, be the first person to represent both districts. Right. Uh, but you know, when you're, a con when you're a member of Congress uh, from Hawaii, you effectively uh, represent the entire state anyway. I mean, I don't say to people, oh, you're from Hilo, I'm not going to help you. Well, of course I'm going to Oh, yeah, to help. of course. Uh, yeah, and it's a small place. <laughs> so anyway, I started in Makapu, right. and I was expecting it to take me about, it's about 60, 65 miles uh, wow. to walk that entire district, right. so all the way through and then up to the very top of Mililani Malka. <laughs> okay. That was a that was a um, that was a story in and of very itself, good. and then back down across Eva Plain through Kapolei wow. to to the really? end, where I jumped in the water at the yeah. very end. It felt really really good. Um, so I was figuring it would take me about uh, 10 days, maybe about yeah. six miles a day. Uh, but as I set out, um, I was really covering ground pretty well, so I just kept going, and it ended up taking about six days, 62 miles. Wow, that's, I had my, my, uh, that's my, quite you know, short. <laughs> yeah, it, I had my watch on and, and uh, my, my, what do you call it, uh, um, you know, uh, distance watch, running watch. And so I was tracking, you know, distance and time, and I was really into distance, time, pace, all that kind of stuff. But, so what's a memorable story that you can well, relate you know, to us? Well, uh, I think what is so incredible when you get out and walk across the first congressional is the diversity of the right. first congressional. You have geographic diversity. Of course, you have parts of the district that are, you know, mountains and valleys. Uh, That's right. You, you Honolulu have, is uh, a series of uh, valleys and, and, and valleys uh, and, uh, mountains, and, uh, yeah, yeah. and very different from each other. Like, I'm from Kalihi originally. Yeah. I still consider myself well, a person from exactly. Kalihi Paloma. <laughs> um, so, so then you go up in, you know, the central central Oahu, which has its own personality. Right. Mililani is a beautiful community. Uh, and then down through Waipahu and Eva, which is flat, hot. Um, and so you have the, the kind of geographic diversity. You, you obviously have um, cultural diversity all the way through. Um, incredible diversity. You know, one of the things that was one of my favorite parts of, about the walk, uh, I mean, I had so many stories to tell about this walk. But you take six miles of King Street. Right. Oh, so yeah, King yeah, Street right. starting yeah. at the top of uh, Kapahulu right, right, right. on the east side, yeah. all the way to the end yeah. when you're running into Mapunapuna. Right. Um, that's six miles. Hmm. Walk wow. King Street one day or a couple of days and look at all the diversity, oh, it's, it's all the history. You know, you you go from from Mo'ili'ili into Pava'a into right. into you know. Uh, and 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 west of uh, Liliha King Street is uh, Kalihi. And then you get into <laughs> Kapalama yeah, right. and Kalihi. Yeah, right. uh, of course, there are uh, you know ethnic uh, predominances in, in each one of those uh, particular areas, and that and that translates some somewhat into. Uh, you know, cultural and religious in some so ways. So are you saying that there's different priorities out there that they're thinking about, or there, are there any overarching priorities that you saw and heard from people that kind of had a narrative or, or threads throughout your, uh, your walk? Well, I would, I would say that uh, the, the biggest overarching priority of everybody, it doesn't matter where in, where in CD1, or for that matter, the state of Hawaii you are, or I believe for that matter, the country, um, people just think that the government is broken. They just think Washington is not working. They just don't get why everybody is yelling and screaming at each other. And these are people that have very partisan, uh, strong uh, partisan uh, uh, philosophies. Uh, they could be very liberal, they could be very conservative, they could be very moderate. Uh, they could come from any number of different places, but they all think that their government ought to work better. So that's a clear prevailing. Uh, so there's priority. a disconnect between there's, there's between their lives, our lives, and what's happening in D.C. Complete disconnect. Okay. Yes, and this is obviously something that's. And happened. how do you think you're going to remedy that and bring back a story that um, I'm, I'm trying to cure this problem to you on in, in King Street or Kahala or, or on Kapolei? Well, first of all, I think people have to have to um, agree with you that that's a problem. And I think the results of the election indicate that people do agree with uh, me on that and with other um, uh, candidates, uh, number one. Number two, they have to think that you actually have the experience and the ability and the know-how and the commitment uh, to going up there and trying to break through some of that log jam. You know, it's really hard to break that log jam because people just get locked into a certain uh, way of thinking, acting, and doing where, you know, um, <clears throat> if you're a Democrat, you're expected to function only on the Democratic side and the Republican only on the Republican side. And that's the basic problem in our country today is that there's, there's no real attempt to find uh, uh, solutions that work for all. It's really an ongoing battle to impose the solutions of one side on, every, on the other side, and that's not going to work. So, so would you say that the things you were trying to do back when you spent your time in Congress, 2002, 2007, that era, 
are things that you can apply today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what uh, are they? Yeah, well, I mean, you know what? Some of it's so simple. Um, do you create um, relationships? Who do you create relationships with? You have 435 members. I'm one of 435 members. So it's not like I can walk up in there and say, hey, I'm Ed Case, I'm from Hawaii, I'm announcing my arrival and I'm gonna fix the entire country. There's that's, a lot out there. That's, that's, a lot, a lot well, of some people. people do feel that way, but I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not one of them. Right. I've, I've been around too long to know. So you have to create a you consensus. You have to create relationships. Right. You have to create uh, relationships and you have to create them across the Congress. Mm -hmm. um, it's unlikely that you will have a deep working relationship with 435 uh, 434 of your colleagues. So can you create enough relationships of trust, of mutual assistance, of, of, of commitment, uh, of people that feel the same way as you do with the country and are similarly trying to break this logjam? And can you create a critical mass then of those folks that can start to influence the broader uh, picture? That's really the challenge and, and uh, that's what I've done my entire life anyway in both. In both. So you're, you're saying the skill sets uh, and, and that you developed during those years in Congress can well um, uh, benefit Hawaii today? Well, not only in Congress, but uh, in my earlier eight years in the state legislature and four years in the neighborhood boards and uh, 30 plus years in the private sector. I've used the same uh, approach uh, throughout 40 years now of, of working and it, and it, it doesn't change um, uh, some, how you implement it changes. Uh, but um, the basic approach does not change. Can you get in there, understand the issue, find the people that believe as you do, or find the people that are willing to be uh, persuaded that that's a problem, and can you then create a critical mass with which to start to influence the broader process? It's not gonna happen. Uh, we're so deep in the hole in Washington, it's not gonna happen in one month, two months. It's gonna take years. So do you have the perseverance? Do you have the resilience to, to carry that through over a number of years? And did you learn that we, we come back to the word resilience? Uh, it, it seems a, a word, a good word for today, to be resilient in a time when so many things are happening out there that you have to keep a focus on and to sustain yourself to really um, attack the problems and find solutions for the people of Hawaii and for the greater country, uh, the greater good of the of the of the nation. Um, any other priorities that came to you uh, aside from the broken government issue? Well, I mean, you know, people are always going to be focused on, uh, uh, on uh, economic vitality and health. Uh, we've had a pretty good economy lately, so they're not as focused as, as perhaps, um, you know, uh, five or ten years ago, obviously, when it was number one. Uh, I, think people, I think people have a uh, disquiet to great concern about inequality in our country. I think that... Uh, inequality think in economics? Inequality uh, of the distribution of wealth and right. opportunity uh, in our country. I think that, um, and I think this is, the, you know, my observation from walking the first and, and campaigning throughout the first is that that is not something that depends, um, you know, on whether you're from, you know, East Honolulu or Waipahu or from Eva or from Mililani. Everybody feels that way, that somehow uh, there are... Um, uh, that, the, that, the, that the fruits of our democracy, that the influence of the grassroots in our democracy, that the ability to actually influence where our country is going is not spread in an equal way. Uh, and I think that that is a predominant uh, issue and a concern of mine, for sure, uh, throughout the country. And, and especially for uh, parents with children. Well, growing absolutely. Up, you know, so, where, you where, know, what kind of life are they going to be yeah. going to? But we're gonna hold this thought after this break, this is all about leadership. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. 
Welcome back. This is Ray Tsuchiyama on All About Leadership, delving into the issues of what do people are thinking about in our communities, which are priorities for their selves, for their families, especially for their children. And we have Ed Case to discuss how we can focus on Hawaii priorities and issues. Ed, go ahead. Well, you know, we've been talking about kind of what I learned walking across the the, uh, the first congressional. By the way, I have to stop here and say that one of the things I learned, uh, which right. I already knew, was yeah. there's a lot of good food out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's because I mean, you were you were you were, uh, uh, you know you were sweating and walking and and, and getting an appetite. I think uh, that if you sit well, down all day. I well, mean, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> while I was walking, okay. uh, I couldn't actually um, you know yeah. um, eat because if you eat a big uh, you know, a uh, Filipino lunch and then right. go out and walk another six miles. Oh. That don't mix too well. But that doesn't mean you can't <laughs> like go that, back though. after the walk yeah. and uh, and go to the San, San Nicolas Market right, and, right. you know, Kalihi and, right, and right. you know, get every all of that good food. So, um, you know, so I've been talking about national issues. So, you know, our government is not working, growing inequality. I would add to that our relationship with the world, which is very important to us here. That's a a complete uh, a concern of a lot of people. Immigration is a big issue that's on the lo minds of many. Those are national issues. Here in Hawaii, um, it's really ba basically just the cost of living uh, mm -hmm. across the board. I think that's of concern. And people are leaving. Yeah, there's there's I mean, uh, uh, yeah. communities in you know, Vegas and Oregon and Washington. Uh, Washington. And you know, there's yeah. a, of course a, you know, there's a report in the paper today in which they surveyed uh, folks throughout the country and determined that uh, we're the happiest of anywhere in the, in, the, in the country right now. And I think we are pretty happy here. Uh, but that's uh, that, know, that's the people who are who have remained here. Uh, no, <laughs> and others was, uh, who, who you know, both I, with their I, with their feet. I found yeah. I found uh, most people throughout the district happy, um, but that doesn't mean they weren't stretched out. That doesn't mean they weren't concerned. That doesn't mean it wasn't hard to live. And and so you know all of the issues that that have to do with the cost of living, housing clearly oh, the yeah, top right, one. But right. more than that, you know, cost of food, cost of energy, uh, cost of the basic. Cost of education. Yeah, cost of private school uh, education, twenty well, twenty two thousand know, uh, dollars a year. So those some, are some those families. are key areas, of course, that our federal government has uh, a major uh, say in, along with the state and the county. And I would want to work there. Traffic, a huge issue. Right. And uh, infrastructure, one of your key uh, infrastructure places, uh, overall, roads, airports, um, sewage, uh, water, uh, key areas. All of that. It's but, coming. But uh, to new. emphasize traffic, <laughs> <laughs> because it, you know, you. It's it's uh, it's you know we do have the worst traffic um, in the country and that's that's just uh, you know inexcusable historically that we let ourselves get in that situation. But I challenge anybody who doesn't think that we have a traffic problem to go walk through um, you know um, the the stretch from you know say uh, uh, you know Kalihi on west uh, through uh, Leeward uh, and especially walk down Fort Weaver Road you know sign weave on Fort Weaver Road at 5 30 in the morning and watch well, how many cars. Oh, yeah. They get up at 4 o'clock or 4 30 just to you know get on the road. So right. you know I mean that's an obvious the downtown. concern. That's an and you know people think oh well you know central Honolulu and east Honolulu is, is safe from that. Well go go sign wave at, on, at Inakoa <laughs> at uh, 5 30 or 6 yeah. in the morning and watch how many cars are going by you. Um, so that's a that's a that's a key concern. Um, but you talked about immigration, and I think uh, uh, you've also discussed uh, one of the um, uh, key areas for any office uh, in, uh, in the House, constituent services. Uh, and, and I went through this with uh, my own life. Uh, I had a senator uh, to help me out uh, in a fiancé visa for my wife. And later, when my father passed away, uh, we received some help with the punch bowl, and both my parents are in punch bowl. And I think there's a lot of attention stress for a lot of immigrant families uh, here in Hawaii, trying to get reunite their uh, families uh, together in, in Hawaii, or bring uh, bring a fiance, or uh, or benefits and so forth. Uh, is that an area where your office can play a, a role? Absolutely. And I learned from a master of this, uh, Spark Matsunaga, who I worked for from the age of 22 to 25. If I hadn't gone to work for Spark Matsunaga, I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> Um, you know, interviewing with you, that was a, <clears throat> that was a changing point or, a, or, a, or a, an incredible fork in the road for me, an unexpected fork in the road, but here I am. Um, and Spark always uh, uh, um, um, emphasized constituents. You know, sometimes people ask me, uh, can you describe in 15 seconds the job description for a member of Congress, a U.S. congressman? And I say, oh, sure, I'll do that for you. Number one, Contribute to national leadership for our country. A congressman, a member of Congress, is a national leader. Number two, 
uh, assist your state and your county and your right. district with the federal government. What can the federal government so do? So there's help? a national focus and a local focus. There's right a, there. Well, there's a national yeah. focus, there's a local focus, and there's an individual constituent oh, right. focus. So number Good three one. is constituent yep. services. Now, um, a lot of people focus on number two. Uh, frankly, a fair number of members of Congress, sometimes you would think that they would not be reluctant to uh, uh, um, contribute to national leadership, right. but they focus more on two. Uh, a fair number of members of Congress don't give enough attention to number three constituent mm -hmm. services. And, and when I was in Congress, 02 to 07, that was a key priority for my office. How can we help you with your individual concerns? Right. Immigration is a huge individual concern, especially for uh, families uh, who are split between um, um, you know, uh, the old country right. and, the and, and our country. Or China or Some of these Vietnam. people yeah. have been waiting in line legally yeah. uh, for 10 or 20 years now. Now that's, that's just not right. That's not right. Um, other areas that were uh, key areas for constituent services were, were veteran services right. um, and um, um, uh, social, social security. And I'll, I'll give you a very quick um, example of constituent services uh, that, that um, to me, um, it's kind of heartwarming thinking back on it. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're asking for uh, veterans benefits, disability benefits, uh, you have to demonstrate a connection between your, the, the injury uh, that you have suffered and your service as a veteran. Right. Um, that's easy where you have a very tangible injury, but let's take PTSD, right. let's oh, take yeah. post-traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah. Sometimes PTSD doesn't kick in for- Number of years, right? After, decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you have to demonstrate that there was some event in your service that contributed to the PTSD that manifested itself 10, 20, 30 mm -hmm. years later. Um, and we had one case on Maui where we had a veteran of, I recall it being the Korean War. So we're talking about a long oh, yeah, time right. ago. That's and he said, yeah. he said that he had suffered a very traumatic uh, uh, injury um, in, in, a, in, a, in a foxhole, I think it was, in, in Korea uh, during the war. And here he was uh, 40 years later at the time uh, claiming uh, benefits. Uh, and there was every evidence from his doctors that that was the case. The problem was that he could not find anybody to oh, attest right, to right. Um, the as fact. As a witness that, kind of thing. As a witness. Yeah, yeah, so right. we went out there and helped him yeah. to find the people in his company. And, and we found some and we got them to give buddy statements. Uh, we, they call them buddy statements, and um, those buddy statements entitled him uh, to get benefits. Now, I feel good about that. I feel just as good about that as when you know when I when I get a you know a, you know a significant uh, federal grant <clears throat> to the state of Hawaii, <clears throat> or for that matter when when there is a good result on a national leadership issue. You know that that was that was something where the, my office made a difference to somebody. And at a local level, and, and our family's uh, um, you know, response, uh, we, we could never pay back what we got out of that. Uh, it, was, it was an unbelievable uh, experience. But Spark Matsunaga, he, his gravesite is very near my parents, in fact, right at the edge there, uh, by the Calabarium, where my parents are. What did you learn from him? What kind of person was he? Uh, people forget about him. Uh, uh, it's been so long. But to me, he's one of the uh, most important leaders in uh, the post-war era. But what, what, what was it that uh, really resonated with you? Um, you know, um, so many messages, uh, lessons rather, that I, that I got from Spark Matsunaga. Of course, I, jo I joined him when he was still a United States uh, congressman oh. in the district that I now um, um, am, am aspiring to represent. So it, 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 it it is, it is deeply meaningful and even emotional, emotional to me uh, that I would um, be eligible to um, uh, represent the same district as, as my mentor uh, represented. I think, I think, you know, Spark, he was a very accomplished person. He was very ambitious, um, but he was very humble about it. Uh, he was very uh, open and personable. Um, he tried to tell you what he thought. Um, he tried to uh, describe what the, the problems were. He, he believed very much in um, education of his constituents, and he believed very much that um, one thing he said, and I, I've never forgotten this, he goes, you know, Ed, uh, because he, he worked late, he worked very, very late, like one, two in the morning, and um, I learned uh, early on that if I wanted time with him, what I needed to do was work late also. <laughs> and so then I could like invent some excuse to go in at 10 o'clock yeah. at night and say, you yeah, know. Yeah, align your schedule. Yeah, align your schedule. Well, yeah. no, we were both working late. And so um, I was talking about something, and he goes, you know, Ed, I got to, I got to, I got to just tell you my thinking on that. He goes, you know, I've got a lot of good people that I represent back in Hawaii, and most of them, 
They never have a contact with their federal government. They pay taxes to their federal government for decades. Uh, they support their federal government. They trust their federal government to do, but they have no interaction with their federal government. And for them, I am the federal government. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so when I face, interact yeah. with them, uh, when they come to visit um, in our office, uh, we are going to be the best federal government we can be. When they ask for my help, we are going to be the best federal government, because that may be the only contact they ever have. And so that's the only time that they ever needed something. Uh, and all so, those things come up, promptness, efficiency, you know, uh, every um, single all, all kinds of, you know, uh, helping out yeah. and, and, and trying to close the issue. And you're yeah. absolutely right. If they, and they would believe that the entire federal government yeah. is like that. The <laughs> other the other thing that uh, Matsunaga and, and uh, you know, all of his era, um, um, Inoue and Hiram Fong, uh, who was there when I first started, and Patsy Mink, who, of course, uh, most of us know as a very strong uh, partisan leader, right. um, they all believed uh, in maintaining relationships, as I've already described, with people across the spectrum, across the aisle, and to not make it personal, because it's a perfect example of Senator McCain and Inouye. Uh, they disagreed on a very no right. great number They're of issues, but uh, they, yeah, they, they kept friends. it um, uh, uh, professional, and they kept collegial, and that's something Matsunaga taught me. You know, Patsy Mink, uh, she developed those uh, uh, consensus uh, building skills at Maui High School. In order to get uh, be elected, I think, uh, uh, a class president or something, she had to get the football team on her side. Yeah. And my father is, of course, at Maui High School, uh -huh. so I know the story. Uh, and her uh, grandparents are, are from Kumamoto, uh, very uh, uh, disciplined, focused. Uh, and her father was the first Japanese-American graduate at University of Hawaii. Uh, amazing. Uh, yeah. uh, great focus there. Uh, but going back to Spark, uh, Spark Matsunaga, I think his nickname came from his ability to run very fast uh, at the football field. Am I correct? Yeah. Well, it was more about uh, he, he was a spark plug. You know, he was like he had the energy. <laughs> right. like he would maybe it had to do with his, his acceleration from right. a, 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 from a standing stop. That's right. Uh, that, that's football. what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, from uh, spark uh, plugs to uh, uh, now the uh, you know uh, state of the uh, nation. I wish you thank you for your time today. And best wishes on a, another um, another election coming up uh, for you. But you've been through so many, and, and uh, good luck on your uh, general election in November. Well, thank you so much. Um, EdCase.com has a lot more information on me. I appreciate the, the opportunity to, sp to speak to folks. Thank you very much. This is Ray Tsuchiyama with another um, show on All About Leadership. Thank you very much.